The Galactic Council collectively gasped, terror coursing through alien veins. As they watched through the Hazari viewscreen, something no race had seen and lived to speak of. The HSS Indomitable, a genuine human warship, dropping out of FTL into the Hazari home system. Roy Adams, the battle-scarred captain, stood rigidly on the bridge of the looming vessel, his eyes narrowing as hundreds of Hazari warships filled his sights. The Indomitable was alone, utterly surrounded by an alien fleet bristling with weapons, but Roy cracked a borderline sadistic grin. His hand hovered over the ship's weapon controls, eager to activate dormant tech not unleashed since the Terran Hazari conflict a decade prior. Memories of that bloody war played out in Roy's mind. The unprovoked Hazari ambush on humanity's maiden extrasolar colony. The millions of innocent human lives snuffed out. Earth's retaliation that obliterated dozens of Hazari planets into radioactive hellscapes. Ten years of frigid peace hadn't dulled Roy's bloodlust one bit. This was his shot to settle the score and ensure human colonies were never preyed on again. Suddenly the face of Mizar, the Hazari Supreme Commander, crackled onto the Indomitable's viewscreen, his needle fangs flashing as he sneered. Her single human ship alone, Mizar growled, cruel amusement in his alien eyes. I knew if we butchered enough humans, one of you would come groveling for a truce. But just one vessel? Your arrogance is astounding. I'm not here to beg, Roy declared, his voice dripping with violent promise. I'm here to finish this permanently. Roy's fist slammed the weapon controls. The indomitable thrummed with barely restrained destructive energy. Mizar's face slackened as impossible readings flooded his senses. That's not possible, the Hazari stammered. A ship that size can't have... Is there enough power to wipe your homeworld off the star charts? Roy interjected with a vicious smirk. Surprise. If Roy failed here, the Terran colonies were doomed, and humanity would be forever crippled, millions more perishing in a genocidal Hazari onslaught. Everything hinged on the indomitable and the devastating new weapons the Council were about to witness firsthand. Mizar's face twisted into a mask of apoplectic rage. He slammed his fist onto the communications console, screaming for his fleet to open fire. Hundreds of Hazari ships unleashed a storm of energy beams and missiles at the Indomitable. The weapons streaked through space, a blistering torrent of firepower, potent enough to reduce a small moon to a molten hellscape. But to Mizar's utter disbelief, the Indomitable's shields flared to life and absorbed the onslaught without so much as a flicker. The barrage splashed harmlessly against the human warship's defences, like waves breaking on an indomitable cliff face. Roy let out a low chuckle as he watched the impotent Hazari assault bounce off his shields. He cracked his knuckles and flashed a predatory grin. My turn. Roy's fingers danced across the weapons console, inputting a rapid series of commands. The indomitable's hull shimmered and split open, revealing rows upon rows of missile tubes enough ordnance to glass a continent. Roy locked onto the largest Hazari dreadnought, a monstrous ship bristling with guns, and stabbed the fire button. A swarm of glowing red projectiles erupted from the Indomitable's hull, streaking towards the dreadnought like vengeful comets. The missile slammed into the dreadnought's shields and detonated in a blinding flash. The explosion's shockwave shattered the Hazari ship's defences like a sledgehammer through glass, the dreadnought was engulfed in secondary explosions as the missile's antimatter warheads ignited, setting off catastrophic chain reactions throughout the ship. Explosions blossomed along the dreadnought's hull, tearing it apart from the inside out until nothing remained but an expanding cloud of debris and ash. Roy didn't pause to savour his victory. His fingers were already keying in the next set of firing coordinates, locking onto another Hazari ship. One by one, he obliterated the Hazari fleet with cold, merciless precision. The Indomitable's missiles sliced through the alien's shields as if they weren't even there, spitting on the laws of physics with every impossible impact. In a matter of minutes, the once-proud Hazari armada was reduced to a drifting graveyard of wrecked ships and irradiated dust. Mizar watched in slack-jawed horror as his mighty fleet was dismantled before his eyes, 
swatted from the stars like insects. He whirled to face his ashen-faced tactical officer, desperation taking hold. Evacuate the planet, Mizar shouted, his voice raw and shaking. Get the civilians to the escape pods. We can't stop that, that thing. Roy watched his sensors light up as thousands of escape pods launched from the Hazari homeworld, tiny motes of light streaking towards the system's edge in a frantic bid to outrun the Indomitable's wrath. His finger hovered over the firing button, the pods nothing more than defenseless targets on his targeting display. Every atom in his body screamed to push the button and finish the job. But then he hesitated. His finger trembled over the console, unwilling to descend. These were civilians in those pods. Innocence. As much as he despised the Hazari, slaughtering helpless non-combatants would make him no better than the monsters who'd butchered human colonists all those years ago. With a heavy sigh, he lowered his hand. Roy's console screamed with alerts as the GCS peacekeeper materialized from its cloaking field. His eyes widened as he took in the immensity of the council ship. It was a floating fortress, studded with enough guns to crack a planet in half. Roy had seen council ships before, but never one this massive. His calm panel crackled and flashed. Human vessel, this is the GCS peacekeeper. Stand down immediately or we will open fire. Roy slammed his fist on the armrest, rage boiling in his gut. The Galactic Council, the self-appointed protectors of the galaxy. Where were they when the Hazari butchered millions of human colonists? cowering behind their treaties and platitudes, that's where. He toggled the comm. Peacekeeper, this is Captain Roy Adams of the HSS Indomitable. The Hazari have committed countless atrocities against my people. This is a matter of justice. Stay out of my way. Captain Adams, the Council has deemed your actions here to be a disproportionate response. Stand down now, or face the consequences. Roy's fingers dug into the weapons console, his knuckles white. Disproportionate? The Hazari exterminated entire human colonies. They slaughtered civilians by the millions, and the Council did nothing. No, Peacekeeper, I will not stand down. If you want to stop me, you'll have to kill me. He cut the comlink with a vicious stab, targeting brackets locked onto the Peacekeeper's hull. The Indomitable's reactor hummed as power surged to the weapons banks. The two ships circled each other, a pair of titans poised for battle. The void between them crackled with tension, a hair trigger from igniting into all-out war. The peacekeeper struck first. A searing lance of plasma erupted from its prow, slamming into the indomitable shields. The human ship shuddered under the impact, its defences straining to absorb the blow. Roy roared as he returned fire, a salvo of missiles streaking towards the council vessel. They impacted against the peacekeeper's shields, flaring brilliantly but inflicting minimal damage. Roy cursed under his breath. The council ship's technology was leaps and bounds ahead of the Hazaris. Its shields shrugged off the Indomitable's missiles like raindrops. This wasn't going to be a quick victory. The peacekeeper's weapons lashed out again, battering the Indomitable's defences with relentless fury. Roy's ship groaned under the onslaught, its hull creaking and buckling. But Roy wasn't about to back down. Not now, not with justice so close at hand. He gritted his teeth and fired again, pouring every ounce of power into the Indomitable's guns. The battle raged on, the two ships trading blows like ancient gods of war. Explosions blossomed in the void, brief suns born and dying in an instant. The Indomitable's shields flickered and strained, pushed to the brink of collapse. But still Roy fought on. He would not yield, not to the Hazari, not to the Council. Humanity had suffered too much, lost too much, to back down now. If this was to be his final stand, so be it. He would fight to his last breath. The Indomitable shuddered under the relentless onslaught, its shields flickering dangerously close to collapse. In the command chair, Roy gritted his teeth, his eyes locked on the tactical display. The peacekeeper's weapons were simply too powerful, its shields too strong. At this rate it was only a matter of time before the Indomitable was reduced to a drifting wreck. But Roy Adams didn't survive a decade of war with the Hazari by giving up. 
His fingers flew across the console, diverting power from the engines to the ship's experimental phase cannon. It was a desperate gamble. The cannon was so powerful it had been banned by the Galactic Council, deemed too destructive for use. But desperate times called for desperate measures. The cannon hummed to life, an eerie blue glow emanating from its barrel as it charged. Roy's eyes narrowed as he lined up the shot, aiming directly for the Peacekeeper's bridge. One shot. That's all he would get. He fired. A blinding beam of pure energy erupted from the Indomitable's bow, crossing the void in an instant. It struck the Peacekeeper's shields, and for a moment the Council ship's defences held. But then, with a brilliant flash, the beam punched through, slicing into the Peacekeeper's hull like a hot knife through butter. The Council ship's bridge exploded in a fireball of shattered metal and vaporized bodies. Secondary explosions rippled along its hull as critical systems failed, one by one. The Peacekeeper listed to the side, its engines sputtering and dying, reduced to a lifeless husk. Roy allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction as he watched the Council ship drift, powerless. But there was no time to celebrate. He turned his attention back to the Hazari homeworld, now defenseless before him. His finger hovered over the firing button, a single press all that was needed to unleash a barrage of antimatter warheads that would reduce the Hazari civilization to ashes. It would be so easy, so satisfying. After all the atrocities the Hazari had committed, all the human lives they'd snuffed out, they deserved nothing less than total annihilation. But as Roy stared at the targeting display, at the blinking lights representing the fleeing Hazari escape pods, he hesitated. Civilians. Innocents. Just like the ones the Hazari had slaughtered on human colonies. Could he really stoop to their level? Become the very monster he sought to destroy? Memories flashed through his mind. His family lost in the first Hazari attack, the countless friends and comrades he'd seen butchered over the years of bloody conflict. The rage in his heart screamed for revenge, for retribution on a species-wide scale. But there was another voice, small but insistent, the voice of his humanity, of the man he'd been before the war had forged him into a weapon of vengeance. That man, the one who still believed in right and wrong, in the value of innocent life, wouldn't condone this. Couldn't condone this. Roy's hand shook as he wrestled with the decision, the fateful choice that would define not just this moment, but the rest of his life. Vengeance or mercy, annihilation or restraint. He closed his eyes, the weight of millions of lives resting on his next action, and with a heavy heart he made his choice. Roy's hand trembled as he lowered it from the weapons console, the weight of his decision crashing down on him like a tidal wave. A single tear rolled down his battle-hardened cheek, cutting a path through the grime and sweat. With a shaky breath, he opened a channel to the fleeing Hazari escape pods. Her attention, Hazari civilians, he said, his voice steady despite the turmoil raging within him. This is Captain Roy Adams of the HSS Indomitable. Your military is in ruins, your defences shattered. I have the power to wipe your cities from the face of the galaxy. He paused, the weight of his next words settling on his shoulders like a physical burden. But I will not. I will not stoop to your level. I will not become the monster that you are. Leave this system, find a new home, and pray that we never cross paths again. With that, Roy closed the channel, his hand falling away from the console as if the very act of speaking those words had drained him of his strength. He turned his gaze to the viewscreen, watching as the Indomitable slowly turned away from the Hazari homeworld, the planet's surface scarred and pockmarked from the battle that had raged in its orbit. As he prepared to engage the FTL drive, a sudden transmission crackled across the bridge speakers, the image of Mizar, bloody and battered, his flagship barely clinging to life, filled the viewscreen. How you think this changes anything, human? Mizar spat, his words dripping with venom and hatred. You think your mercy makes you strong? It makes you weak. We will rebuild, and we will come for you again. This is not over.
Roy met Misa's gaze, his eyes hard as steel, his jaw set with resolution. No, Misa, it is over, because if you ever come near a human world again, if you ever so much as look at one of our colonies, I will be there, and next time I will not hesitate to pull the trigger. This is your last warning. With a sharp motion, Roy cut the transmission, Mizar's face blinking out of existence. He turned his attention back to the console, his fingers flying across the controls as he engaged the FTL drive. The stars on the viewscreen stretched into long lines as the Indomitable leaped forward, the Hazari system disappearing behind them in a flash of light. As the ship hurtled through the void, Roy slumped back in his chair, the adrenaline that had sustained him through the battle finally beginning to fade. He felt the weight of all that had happened settling on his shoulders, the magnitude of his actions sinking in. He knew that his choices today would have consequences. The Galactic Council would not take kindly to a human warship wielding banned weapons and nearly annihilating a member race. There would be repercussions, diplomatic fallout that could take years to untangle. But for now, Roy knew he had done what he had to do. He had shown the galaxy the true might of a human warship, the lengths to which humanity would go to defend itself. He had given the Hazari a taste of the consequences of their actions, a warning that any future aggression would be met with swift and merciless retribution. Whether it would be enough to deter them in the long run, only time would tell. But one thing was certain. The galaxy would never forget the day a single human ship stood against an alien armada and emerged victorious. The legend of Roy Adams and the HSS Indomitable would echo through the stars for generations to come. As the ship hurtled through the void, Roy's thoughts turned to the future, to the uncertain path that lay ahead. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.